Being a ministry wife is a role without a job description. And let's be honest, sometimes it seems like ministry might be easier if we did have one. If you are a ministry wife and are looking for hope, perspective, and a little bit of practical advice regarding your role, you're in the right place. Hi, I'm Christine Hoover, and I also am a pastor's wife, and I want to welcome you to the Ministry Wives podcast, a production of the North American Mission Board. Join me as we hear from women from various ministry contexts, having authentic conversations about our shared joys and challenges, even the ones we're unsure we can talk about out loud. No topic is off limits. My guest today is Elisa Mendina. Elisa has been married to Hector for 22 years, and Hector is the pastor of Saved by Grace Church in Pomona, California. They have six kids, and as you'll hear today, Elisa has a heart for women in their church. So here is my conversation with Elisa Mendina. Welcome, Elisa, to the podcast. I'm so glad to have you. Thank you so much for having me, Christine. And you are living, you said, in California? Yes, in Corona. Corona. So tell us about Corona. What is the community like, the context where you're serving? You know, well, Corona is where I live, and it's um, it's about 45 minutes from where we actually planted our church. Our church is actually in the border of Pomona and Claremont. Um, so Corona is pretty different. Um, it has a bunch of mountain. It's a beautiful view clear skies. It's just very, very, very extra beautiful. Yeah. I mean, California, you can't go wrong. Y'all are (laughs) spoiled over there with really great weather. Yeah, you're so right. You're definitely right. It is, you know, but the the bad thing about uh, our Cali weather is that one day you're wearing a sweater, a jacket, and all of a sudden, completely uh, cold hits you. So it's just you just have to be ready for everything. Okay, well, we're not crying tears for you over there. <laughs> for all the people who are in snow, you know. Um, right. Have you always been in ministry with your husband? Or was he so you said you've recently planted? But have you guys done other types of ministry along the way together? Yes. So we we've known each other since we were 11. Um, I know it's a very young age. <laughs> I would not recommend my kids to go knowing no boys, right? But at that age, but we met when we were 11 and we started junior high and high school together, married when we were seniors. I was a senior in high school and he was a, a graduate. He was working and we ended up getting married. I was pregnant during senior high school year. Thankfully, I made it out and we moved into our own place. And our uh, encounter with Christ began then at a young age, but never a full on commitment of thinking we could plant the church. But then, you know, we entered church, we met Christ, we grew, we learned. And in 2014, God called us to plant a church in Pomona. Okay. And then uh, the whole pandemic happened. Um, we had our lo- last pregnancy and it was a very hard one. And so we, our church closed. Um, we lost our building uh, that was like in the midst of pandemic, pretty much it ended. And then God in his beautiful grace and opportunity gave us another chance in 2021. And here you are. And here we are. Yes. So you're in a new little baby church plant. Yes, we are. We just launched last year, January. And it's been honestly, I know it's hard for a lot of people to hear sometimes, but sometimes restarts is what we need. You know, we honestly needed that reset button to restart and do it all over again, or, or, or as what we felt was doing it all over again from the beginning. And so it, it really changed everything for us. Tell, tell me about that. Why? What has been different the second time around that where you would say that? You know what? I believe that when we first launched when we first started our church, we started in a garage, in our garage. And we started doing it uh, the way we, we've we always known to do church, our traditional way of doing church. And um, I don't know if everyone, because not everyone uh, grows up in, in religion, per se, or in traditions. And so we were. Our parents were very religious and strict and traditional. And so that's kind of how we were doing church, I feel, when we first started. And we felt uh, eventually that that wasn't us. 
but we didn't know how to change that hmm. because we had people that had already been with us for, for quite some time and were accustomed to a way of doing things. And so we kept on doing the thing. And, and I felt that God was t- tugging my husband's heart um, to do it different because he would share some different things, you know, to change maybe the, the way we do the, the experience at church. Uh, more worship, uh, more contemporary, but we had a lot of um, older people that maybe didn't like so much noise or rugged, <laughs> right. what they would call. Yeah. And so it was just really challenging. And we just, you know, I, I think that transitioning to something new was really hard. So it was really slow. And then pandemic hit and we literally had to close everything down. Yeah. And he saw it as an opportunity to do something different because then that's when we started the lives and, and the Zooms. And so everything changed even for him. But when he planned out, when God delivered how he was uh, going to do this differently, it's been a completely different way of uh, having an experience on Sundays, leading people um, in a different direction. And by that, I mean breaking our our. our I guess that the way of doing things in the past, our old traditions, or the way of inviting our new generation in, it, it's more contemporary, it's more bilingual, it's more inviting our young generation to want to worship with their parents as we're older, you know, mm-hmm. and, and they don't want to worship the same way. Um, we honestly I wanted to create something where it invites both cultures, our older generation and this new generation. Uh-huh. So it's bilingual. It's- Does he preach in... Both yes. Spanish and English? Both Spanish and English, yes. How does he do that? He's Spanglish. Honestly, that oh. is how he does it. He's Spanglish. And I know it sounds funny, but it's it's the way it's been able to work for us because most of our church is Spanglish. You're conversating in English, and all of a sudden I'm going to say something in Spanish. You're like, buenos dias, or como están, how are you? And it's just this way of, of, of conversating in both languages at the same time without doing like the translation kind of thing. Uh-huh. I love it. So what what are you passionate about in terms of engaging and relating with the church? What are, what are your roles? Me, I work with the women. So as we enter this new phase in this replant, we wanted to do the uh, one-on-one mentoring and coaching per se. We were accustomed that um, success was based on quantity, like on a number. You know, your church was going well if the numbers were there, if there was, there, you know, if, if, if it was big and and if people were just coming and coming. And so if, if, if I were to measure it that way, then honestly, we would be stuck. We would feel like we ain't doing anything, mm-hmm. you know. And so we started the new church when we started, when we should, we set um, saved by grace, we came with a different mentality that if we are able to reach one soul, if we're able to disciple to the max one person, one woman in my case, then I've done my job. Hmm. And I feel that that took away so much pressure of needing a huge number to be able to do something. And because I feel that in the past, we were like, man, we're just a little church of 20 people. So what can we really do? That 20 people is 20 people. Five people is five people. You know what I mean? Like if you set your eyes on if it's one person and I can lead that one person to that hope in Christ, that experience in his presence that changes you, my job is done and complete. And I feel that that has helped me personally to lead women. So we do a lot of one on one. I don't focus personally in women's ministry uh, for a big number. I'm not looking for a big number. I'm not looking to have a group of 5, 10, 15. I'm looking for one. If I can have more, praise Jesus, right? He's going to give me what I can handle. And I really believe that with women as well. And and by by that, I mean, I'm not talking about the church. We may have more women in, in the church. But my focus is to disciple that one or that two, maybe maybe that three of women that are willing and that are ready now. Mm-hmm. Because I think that in the past, I would get so frustrated that I would see so many great women with so much potential and so, so much good in them that they could just explode in the kingdom. But they weren't ready. They didn't want it. Mm-hmm. And so that kind of frustrates you when you see it and they don't want it. It just doesn't align your kind of work ethic and theirs. And so I was like, no, if God, if you give me that one, I will shepherd them well. Mm-hmm. I will lead that one well. 
And honestly, that's kind of the model we have now at Save by Grace. And I believe that takes the pressure off of everyone that is trying to disciple and lead, in my case, women. When I speak to my leader women, I tell them, you only focus on one. Don't get frustrated and trying to get a number of, you know, more. If you can, praise God, right? But if you can get that one, disciple that one with all your heart, give her your very best, care for her well. We're good because that one's going to learn from you and that one's going to go model the same thing and so on and so on. I love it. I love it so much. I love that you've you've said, hey, COVID was a good opportunity to rethink what we're doing and why. And you've really taken that and run with it. And I can I can feel your passion coming through. Uh, You're just excited about that. And I love that you've taken that not as a discouragement, but as okay, this is a chance to pivot and do something different. So I'd love to talk about women's ministry with you and what you're doing with your women. And first, just I want to know in the context where you're serving, what are some of the issues that women are facing? And how are you looking to meet the needs of these women? Um, You know what, in uh, in our culture, and maybe in every culture, I don't, I'm not quite sure, but we have babies. Okay, I have six babies. And I don't know if it's a cultural thing. I don't know. But we have kids. And sometimes my culture tends to, because I have kids, I can't do A, B, C, or D. Or or I can't be present. Or I can't do. And I understand that because I'm a mom of six Mm. kids from 21 to 2. So I get that. Yeah. And it's a blessing. And I I will not complain because they're a blessing. They're, they're, They're outgoing and willing You know, and they transform me every day. But I love my six humans. Um, Shout out to them because they love their mom and they're so patient with her. (laughs) But uh, um, but I felt like, you know what, God, you've given me six blessings. I want to be able to break barriers of, well, you have a huge family. You can't do nothing like you just have to work at home and take care of your babies. And so what, what, what I've learned is to take on the call that God has given me to teach women that you can do it with your babies with your family like let them be a part of what you're doing what you want to accomplish for the kingdom and so we create a space of for example i'm working with this young mom her name is nancy she's so beautiful she is new and she has four kiddos and they're small and every time i wanted to meet with her it was more like oh it's just that i have all my kids or it's just that i don't have a babysitter or is i don't know where to leave them and i was like girl i got you i have six of my own bring them all, you know, we'll let them and we create a space of let's go to the park and let them chill, play as me and you learn and grow. Like my desire is to lead women to know that they can bring their little humans, I call mine, but their little babies and let them be a part of what you're trying to do for the Lord. Like let them yell and play because we want to model this to other women. Like you don't have to hide your kiddos. And so we're trying to help women understand that they can bring their whole baggage of kids and we'll learn and grow together in the Lord. And honestly, because I know my mom, she had five kids. It was always a, I need to be home and I need to serve my kids kind of thing. That's all I can do. Work, kids work kids and so there was no space for growth or for doing really anything else i didn't want that to be my case and i honestly see so much potential and so many women that i want to help them break through uh, what can stop them the kids or the job or the work load at home and so that's one of the the challenges but that's something that we're helping them navigate through Mm -hmm. as well Do you have a formal women's ministry or is it more of an informal kind of what you're building into the culture of the church? No, we do. You mean by formal, like how do we get it done? Do you have structure for your women's ministry? And if so, tell us about that. Yes. So we do have a women's ministry and we do grace groups. Um, we connect every woman that comes through our church to, we lead them and, and, and guide them into desiring to connect with us through a grace group. And so we do have a couple of women leaders that are in charge of a couple of day, uh, different days, different hours throughout the week. And they get the responsibility and the honor and the joy of connecting with every woman and having them go through their availability. When can they connect? When is a good time for them so they can incorporate themselves into a grace group or a coffee night, whatever's convenient for them. And then um, we just go through a course of depending on where they're at, whether they're beginners, whether they're intermediate, whether they're just, you know, uh, 
we meet them where they're at and at the pace that they're in. Uh-huh. So for somebody listening, especially in church planting, everything has to be started from the ground up, which is this can be hard, but also exciting because you can design something. And so I'm wondering for those listening who are thinking, we don't really have a women's ministry per se, what would you say to them are some really important things to think about from the very beginning? You know what? I think that uh, they should reflect what ministry means to them. Like when you think about ministry, what are you thinking about? Are you thinking about a number or are you thinking about a woman, a person, a one? And I am so, that is so deep in my heart because I was so attached to a number before that I don't think that, I I think that that didn't allow me to pursue just that one. Mm -hmm. I felt it was no work which is a lie. And so I want to encourage every woman out there that is trying to build a ministry as to, I am sure that there is one. I am sure there is one woman at her church already. Maybe not even at her church because it doesn't even have to be at your church. Maybe it's your neighbor. Maybe it's a woman at the market that you see often. Maybe it's a woman you see at the gym and you know, God's tugging at your heart is like, you know what? That is the girl you're going to take for a coffee because that is where it's going to start. Because sometimes we think when they come to us, like when they come to church, then I'll gather a good group and then I'll start a ministry. But let me tell you, some of the the, the greatest women I've found right now, it's been at a job. It's been one of the women that uh, I deeply rooted in our ministry and has grown so much is a person that I found because I used to work for a staffing agency before. And so I would send a lot of people out to work and she was one of those. As I sent her out to work, I literally felt from the Lord invite her to like you know take a a, like a coffee or a drink and i was like i don't know her this is business i send her to work um anywho i obeyed we went for a coffee we went for a drink and that is where it began to what it is today like i've seen such growth in this and her um she's one of our strongest leaders she's what you need i believe that if we model this i began with one just at a coffee shop they get to see oh that is what ministry is. I get to just do it with one. Yes, because as you do it with one and I do it we, with one, now we're four. And mm-hmm. now as us four model, we just let's just have coffee with one. Now we're eight and so on. And I believe that is honest. That is honestly how I truly believe anyone at any point can start with just a coffee. And maybe don't even start with the Bible study. Just invite them for a coffee or a hike. Anything that women love to do. You know what? I'm just going to add this in there. There was something recently that happened. I couldn't go out because um, I was starting a training and then I had my baby and I had a friend in Christ that wanted to meet and I couldn't. She wanted to be there for me, like to bless me with her time. And I kept putting all the excuses because it was just impossible to me. And what she did just changed everything for me because what she said was, you know what, Elisa, I want to see you. So I'm willing to go to your house. We'll cook together. We'll go pick up the kids together if you want. We'll go do whatever it is that you want because I just want to be able to conversate with you and see how you are doing. That just blew me away because sometimes people just want to be met where they're at. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Whatever that may look for them, whether it's at the park, whether it's at the school sites, you know, because they're picking up their kids and just... They want to be met there. Mm-hmm. I was met at my home with my son who's running around like crazy. And I was like, are you sure you want to come to my house? Because you're <laughs> not going to want to come ever again after you meet all of them. And she was so willing and excited about it. I was like, man, that is what we have to do. We have to just be excited about meeting women and, and meeting people and being able to connect with them. However, God leads us at that moment. Mm-hmm. So I believe that anyone can do this. Mm-hmm. It makes me wonder about your own testimony because you said you were a senior in high school when, I don't know if you became a Christian when you were a senior in high school, but around then when you had your baby was when you started going to church. And and so I'm wondering was, did you see this modeled in some way? How did you really begin to understand the gospel? You know what? Um, when I got married and we had our first baby, we, uh, me and my husband were going to get a divorce. I want to say my baby might have been like three. And we were done because he was in a very uh, bad lifestyle. 
Um, he was abusive. He was always in the streets. It was just, it was not good. And um, I remember when I was going to end things, I ended up going to church and speaking to one of our sisters. And I expressed with her how done I was. And I was like, I get it. I'm in church and I want God to do things in my life and in my husband, but it's not moving fast enough. And so I was done. And then she led me to be able to pray differently. She led me to be able to pray that God continues to change me, to be able to love my husband well, despite of, you know, the chaos and the madness he was in, to just love him well and reflect who God was in my life. And as I did that, Honestly, that is what eventually brought my husband to meet Christ, to become the man he is now, because he's not the man he was at all, 100%. Like when I say God should not listen to our prayers, I mean it, because I was just asking for a good husband. Like I was just, can he just be polite? Uh God gave me, God transformed this man into someone I don't, um, like I I can't recognize. It's real, and, and I'm honest when I say that. I do not recognize who this man is that now loves me well, cares for me well, our kids, our family, uh, loves God with all he that he is and in his church. It's just mind blowing. And so I, how we came about uh, with this new model, honestly, it was because we knew that what we were doing before wasn't working, wasn't fulfilling. And it was just a lot of pressure, I feel. And my husband kept feeling in his heart, you know what, we're doing it not the way God wants us saved by grace to do it. Like he wants us to model something different. Not that what we were doing was wrong. You know, we would go to worship and we would lead people to Christ. And, you know, we would do yeah. the experience, the traditional experience. But God was leading my husband into leading the church into let's do the one. Let's focus on one person because if you love one person well, that one person's going to see it and feel it and they're going to continue to do the same mm-hmm. with others. And honestly, it came from him. Mm-hmm. Literally, he spoke words in my life that changed my whole perspective of how we lead women and, and ministry. And that is what we're modeling today. That's amazing. I know everyone who listens to this episode, they're going to all walk away with with one specific phrase in their mind, and that is the one. <laughs> Do it for the one, right? What are some things now you've had? Now you have many years of ministry experience. What are some things that you uh, wish that you had known going in? You know what? I I, I think that I don't. Uh, it would be that I don't have to do it all. That it's okay not to have all the ministries in place, you know, because like I said, traditionally you have them all, right? You have kids, you have youth, you have the pre-K, you have men, you have women, you have el- you have them all. Mm-hmm. And you, you're like, okay, we're starting, we need to have it. Nobody's going to want to come here if we don't have the youth and if we don't have the kids and if we don't have it all yeah. figured out yeah. now, yeah. right? And I get it because it's great hospitality, you know, like I completely get it, Um But when you're just starting, I I wish somebody would have said, you're so okay if you don't have it. Like, work with what you have. And if what you have is just women right now, as you do the hard work with them, which is lead them and teach them and disciple them, you're going to have women that are going to want to serve in ministry. You know what I mean? So even if it's a hard couple of months, even if it's a a hard year where you're just discipling and doing the hard work, it's going to reap goodness because then all these women and all these men that were just poured on are going to want to serve God willing. And, you know, then we're going to develop ministries, you know? So Mm -hmm. what about, uh, I'm just thinking we've, we've talked some about the challenges that you face. I'd love to know if there are other challenges that you're facing in ministering to women. You mentioned kids, a lot of kids, you know, a part of the mix, but what are there other challenges that you're facing in reaching women? Uh, you know what? Um, so we want to uh, be able to lead them to an experience where they can rest, where they can, you know how they say self-care, right? Mm-hmm. And it's so important. And sometimes setting time aside for what is good for us we, we or what we need, we won't do it because we feel, or at least uh, our context of women, they feel like there is so much to do. Like if mm-hmm. I care for me, 
Like who's going to feed the children? Yeah. Who is going to do that? And maybe it's everyone, but in our tradition, it's like we have to serve the men or in the tradition that we're trying to break. It's more like, yes, we serve our, our husbands well, we serve our kids well, but you got to take care of yourself well as well. And it's okay to want to care for yourself well. You know, honestly, if we don't do it, Nobody else is going to really do it, you know, because that's as moms or as women, we are the doers. Like we do, 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 do. You know, we never sit, sit and just chill for a minute. Even That minute just won't count for our kids. Like even if you tell them to sit for a minute, they won't, you know. So I feel that sometimes we won't rest. We won't take personal time for us, you know. I sometimes before I would think that I can't go to the gym because if I go to the gym, that's going to be an hour. And what if they lose it at the house or what if some? You know, I felt like I needed to be in control of everything. And that's not the case, you know. So I feel like we're trying to bring awareness to care, you know, to self-care, you know, to self-rest, you know. Like, it's okay to step away from the the fast, outgoing environment that you're in, you know. Like, create moments that allow you to rest as a woman, as a doer, because we're always doing, you know. It's the reality. We're always yes. doing something for someone. Yes, that is the reality. So just a closing question. I would love to know what are some of the things that you have celebrated lately? Like, can you tell us a story of how God has moved in the life of a woman in your church? Absolutely. Um, it's going to be this new woman I met a couple of months ago. Um, she came into our church and uh, she was an incredible young mom for kids, a husband, uh, married at a very young age when she was 16, I believe. And so she's had a very, very rough life. Um, her story is so beautiful because as she came to church on a visit, she did mention at a time that she had gone to so many places where she never felt invited, accepted, and received as she was. Because like I said, there are so many things that need to be broken and what we portray as you can, you are allowed to come in as you, you know, um, she was allowed to come into our the church, our environment as she is. And she, in a couple of months, I want to say maybe about six months, her leadership, her way of being, her character, all that she is has completely changed. And when I say that, I don't say it just because I see it, but because her partner, her husband has mentioned it to us, who wasn't a person that was coming to church either. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of a cry out for her and when she would cry out to me like, you know what? I need prayer because I hope that my husband comes to church one day because it would just be her and her children. And my, I was like, you know what? You just keep modeling Christ. You just keep modeling Christ and you'll see how he'll eventually see who Christ is in you and he'll come by. Don't force the husband. Just do that. Just be Christ-like. That's it. She kept on doing that. And then he ended up coming because she got baptized a couple, on Easter of last year. I want to say her mid last year. She got baptized and her husband came. And from there on, the husband has been a part of our community. And I want to celebrate that because it really takes a lot of, of, of a woman to say yes to Jesus. Yes to this new life, even if my husband still doesn't want to be a part of. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's hard work. I mean, if it's already hard work when two pe humans that believe in Christ live together, now can we just picture when there's one believer and one just doesn't want nothing to do with the Lord for, for this time, mm -hmm. you know? And so she stuck to it. She kept showing up every Sunday to every grace group, to every coffee, to every learning moment. She took it. And there's been hours of conversations and yes, it's tears and transformation, all of it. But now we see, and she sees it too, the goodness of the Lord as she sees her husband coming to church and celebrating, honestly, change in her life because his words have said it. My wife is not the same person as before. Hmm. This is a different woman. So we praise God for those words yes. from a man that just came, you know, it's just started coming to church. That is pretty awesome. That is so pretty I awesome. Upon her, yes. Yes. Well, what a what a wonderful, encouraging conversation to have with you, Elisa. And just a brief snapshot of how God has worked in your husband's life and your life and your family and what he's doing there now in your new church in California. So thank you so much for sharing that with us. You're so welcome. It's been an honor. It's a pleasure. You know what I feel? Peace and joy that I'm able to share what God is doing right now because he is still doing a lot in, in our community. Yes. Thank you.
Thanks so much for listening to the Ministry Wives podcast, a production of the North American Mission Board. If you found this content helpful, please subscribe, rate, and review us on your podcast platform or share it with a friend. You can find this podcast and other helpful resources at ministrywivespodcast.com.